Our politically incorrect segment tonight, a Chicago LGBT march banned Jewish pride flags because the organizers said the Jewish flags made people feel unsafe. According to these organizers, the march was pro-Palestinian and anti-Zionist. With me now, former IDF soldier and former NYPD officer Mika Danzig. Mika, thanks for being here. Of course, Liz. Thanks for having me. Mika, this story is outrageous. I mean, this flag, and I, I, think, I think we have a graphic of this, but I'll describe it either way. It is a rainbow flag with the Jewish Star of David on this. This was being carried by gay Jewish people, and they were told that they had to leave because of this. Yeah, it's, it's outrageous with a capital O. I mean, you're talking about the pride flag, the rainbow flag, with a Jewish Star of David on it, which has been the symbol of Jews for centuries. And these people, the organizers of what they self-describe as the Chicago Dykes March, uh, said that it triggered people at the march and made them feel unsafe. I mean, so the symbol of Jews made them feel unsafe, and they asked the Jewish people holding the symbol, the universal symbol for Jews, to leave. They forced them to leave this march. Right, which is, it's, it's, it's r absolutely ridiculous here. I mean, the idea that it would be unsafe. And then they describe themselves as being anti-Zionist. So I would like to just pose this question to you, Mika. Is it in Israel where being gay is a crime? <laughs> well, that's the whole thing is this, is this is intersectionality politics run amok. It's suicidal intersection intersectional politics. It's even self-hating intersectional politics because their whole ideas, I mean, the first and foremost idea behind these pride marches and behind the LGBTQ movement is to try and make LGBTQ people safe, right? That's the first and foremost thing, equal rights and safety. Well, there's only one country in the Middle East where LGBTQ people actually are safe and have rights, and that's Israel. And there are, by the way, 76 countries in the world where it's illegal to be gay or to be LGBTQ, and it's, there's 14 countries in the world where it's, they actually have the death penalty on the books for being LGBTQ. Right, and if we're, if we're talking about not being safe here, let's talk about gay people in Israel here. The place that they're unsafe is in their own country because of Palestinian terrorists who indiscriminately kill Jewish gay people because they're Jewish here. Yet this march, which is supposed to be about safety and tolerance and inclusiveness, doesn't want to include Jewish gay people. It, it makes, uh, it's the most hypocritical thing. It was plainly anti-Semitic in the first place, identifying every Jew uh, or person who has that symbol as being, quote, Zionist in the first place. Most Jews are, but that's still anti-Semitic. Secondly, again, it's, what is their self-interest here? It's, a, it's the same thing as, you know, people today who identify themselves as feminists, but don't care or give a complete pass to the brutality against women in Muslim countries because they don't want to appear Islamophobic. Right, right. And here they give a complete pass to the fact that in Hamas, under Hamas, or the Palestinian Authority, it's illegal and dangerous for your health to be gay. Gay Palestinians run to Israel for safety, but that they don't care about. No, no, it's the same sort of thing. It's the hypocrisy that's rife in all these marches. I mean, I talked about this about a month ago, two months ago when this was happening, but the women's march was the same way. I mean, they claim to be, they claim to be pro-woman, yet if you have a, a pro-life woman or if you have a pro-Israel woman, then you're not a real woman. You're not worthy of the protection. That's exactly the same that we're seeing with this particular uh, gay right. march. You know, they claim to stand up for gay people. They claim to want to be tolerant and accepting, but they don't accept you if you're Jewish, if you're Zionist, if you're pro-Israel. It's absolutely awful because like you said, go back to the Middle East for a second and answer me this question. Which country has concentration camps where gay people are killed? Which country are gay people thrown off the roofs of buildings because they're gay? Which country is it 100% legal to discriminate against gay people? Is it Israel? Of course not. In fact, in Chechnya, like you just mentioned, which is an, an, a Muslim country, they have concentration camps for gay people. In Iran, right, they, they hang people for being gay. Under Hamas, they throw people off of buildings for being gay, right? Under the Palestinian Authority, it's again illegal to be gay and you're persecuted relentlessly for being gay. But of course, not in Israel, but somehow that is, uh, they call that pinkwashing. Again, that's uniquely anti-Semitic. The one Jewish country in the world is accused of pinkwashing when it provides gay people, LGBTQ people with rights, but no other country in the world, America, Canada, Switzerland, et cetera, is accused of pinkwashing for providing LGBTQ people with rights. It's only the Jewish country. And in this right. march, they tried to say they weren't being anti-Semitic, they were being anti-Zionist, and they said Jews who are anti-Zionist would be welcome. Well, can you imagine them having a litmus test for any other group of people showing up? Would they tolerate 
a, a litmus test for African-American gays who came to that, uh, to that march and said, what are your political views before we let you march? Or would they tolerate a uh, litmus test for Arab Americans who showed up to that march and asked them what are their views on certain issues before they could march? Of course not. But now they feel comfortable providing a litmus test for Jewish gay people before they let them march? That is anti-Semitism. It is. It's hypocrisy. It's hypocrisy at its finest. We saw it with the Women's March. We see it with the Black Lives Matter movement, the founders of the movement, not the people who march. And now we're seeing it with the LGBT uh, movement as well in these marches. There's an underlying agenda, and it's not tolerance. It's not safety and it's not acceptance. It's progressive politics, identity politics. If you don't conform to the identity that they say is appropriate, then you're not fit to be involved here. One last question before we go. And this, I, I imagine the uproar. Paint me a picture of the uproar for one minute, Mika. If people had tried to ban, if this march had tried to ban people that had the rainbow flag, the pride flag, with the star and crescent moon on it. Exactly. And, and again, there you could actually say there's a reason for feeling unsafe. Sadly, in countries that have the star and crescent moon Islamic symbol on their flag, or they identify as Islamic countries, it actually is unsafe, literally unsafe. Literally to unsafe. Be LGBTQ. It's against the law. You are in danger. You can and probably will be killed if you're openly gay in those countries. But the gay marchers here, the pride parades that are so called anti Zionist, they don't seem to care about that because that doesn't fit their American domestic political agenda. It's sad. Mika, thanks for coming on the show. I appreciate it.